Hey, what's going on? It's Justin Dickmeyer from engineeringtrainingexam.com. And in this video, we're going to review higher order homogeneous differential equations. Now, a homogeneous linear second order differential equation takes the form a y double prime plus b y prime plus c y is equal to zero. When we are dealing with these types of equations, we want to solve for the general solution given by y t is equal to c1 y1 t plus c2 y2 t. So this is the general solution that we are going to work towards when solving higher order differential homogeneous differential equations. Now determining the form of y1 and y2t can be done by first putting the differential equation into what's known as the characteristic equation, which is done simply by adding an r variable in the place of the y variables. So to illustrate this, Let's put this uh, general formula of a second order homogeneous linear differential equation into its characteristic, characteristic form. So once again, we just add r's uh, to where the y variable variables are. So this will be a r squared plus b r plus c is equal to 0. So this right here is known as the characteristic characteristic equation. Now once the equation is in this form, we can solve to obtain the two roots r1 and r2. So we want to find r1 and r2, the two roots. and either by factoring or using the quadratic equation. Now the values of r will then determine the form of y1t and y2t. So to illustrate what, uh, uh, what the different forms would be, let's uh, do a quick table. Let's say we have the roots in the left column and uh, the form of y1t y2t here. So if the roots r1, r2 are real and distinct, so we got r1 and r2 and they're both real and distinct, then the form of y1t and y2t would be y is equal to ae raised to the r1x plus be to the r2x. Now if the roots are real and equal, then the form of y1, y2 would be y is equal to a e r x plus b x e to the r x. Notice how there's no r1 and r2 because we got real and equal roots. Now if the uh, roots are complex, and written as R1 is equal to alpha plus JW and R2 is uh, alpha minus JW then the Y1T and Y2T will take the form of Y is equal to E to the alpha X times A cosine WX plus B sine Wx, and we can get alpha and w through uh, through uh, looking at our our complex roots. So this is a table to remember when we are solving higher order homogeneous linear equations. If we get our uh, equation into its characteristic form, we find the roots, the two roots. If they're real then the uh, y1, y2 is going to be uh, this form. If they're real and equal, then it'll take this form. If they're complex, it will take this form. So this is a table 
to remember when we go to solve. So real quick, let's uh, just recap. Let's recap the steps of solving higher order homo homogeneous differential equations. So the first is to write down the characteristic equation. So we're given uh, a higher order, order homogeneous differential equation, equation. So we need to write it in characteristic form. Once again, that's just sub substituting r for the y values. The second step would to be solve for the roots. Whether uh, you use uh, factoring or if you use the quadratic equation. Third step is to determine determine the form of y1 uh, t and y2 t. So determine form of y1 t and y2 t and once again that will be based off our uh, roots. Number four would be to plug uh, those values, plug the values for y1, y2 into the general solution. So plug y1 t and y2 t into general solution y t is equal to c1 y1 t plus c2 y2 t and then finally number five if we have a uh, if we have a initial value then we can go ahead and solve for all the unknown constants so with initial value uh, solve for constants. So that is the uh, that's the five step process to solving higher order homogeneous differential equations. So let's check this out using an example. Let's find the solution for the uh, differential equation y double prime minus 9y is equal to 0. The first thing we need to do, the first step is to write this down into the characteristic equation uh, subbing r's for the y value. So uh, step number one will end up being r squared minus 9r is equal to 0. The next step is to solve for the roots and we can factor here we know that it's going to be r minus 3 r plus 3 so the roots are going to be r1 is equal to 3 and r2 is equal to negative 3 so now that we have know that two roots are going to be real and distinct then we can get our um, our y1 t and our y2 t values. So y1 t is going to be e to the 3 t and y2 t is going to be e to the negative 3 t. Now just plugging that in to our general equation we're going to get um, we're going to get c1 e to the 3 t plus c2 e to the negative 3t. So we have our general solution here. And actually this is going to be the solution and answer to our problem because we don't have an initial value. So the solution will be yt is equal to c1 e to the 3t plus c2 e to the negative 3t. So let's look at one more example here. Let's say that we're given the equation y double prime minus 2y prime plus 4y is equal to 0. And we're asked to solve and determine the general solution. Once again, we're not going to be doing an initial value here, so we'll just get down to the general solution. So step number one, put it in characteristics form, r2 minus 2r plus 4 is equal to 0. 
Now solving for r, we find uh, we use the quadratic equation. And uh, when we run this through the quadratic equation, we find that we are going to get two complex uh, roots. And they're going to be r1 is equal to 1 minus j to the square root of 3, and r2, 1 plus j to the square root of 3. So we have a complex set of roots. Therefore, our uh, general formula, our general solution is going to take the form of yt is equal to e to the alpha x cos a cosine wx plus b sine wx. So again, our alpha and w will come from our roots and uh, so if we look back at our table we know that the roots take the form, the complex roots take the form of alpha plus jw. So w or let's say alpha in this case is going to be equal to 1 and w is going to be equal to square root of 3. So we just need to plug that into our general form to find that it's going to equal e to the x a cosine square root of 3x plus b uh, sine square root of 3x. And that will be our solution. So that's all I got for you guys today. Once again, if we had initial values for any of these problems, we can go ahead and plug those in to determine all of our constants. Now in this problem, I used A and B as the constant. In the previous one, I used C1, C2. Now you can use either or. It doesn't matter. A constant is a constant. So just uh, keep that uh, in mind. Don't let that confuse you. So if you guys have any more questions, hop on over to engineeringtrainingexam.com. Check out the uh, other videos I got posted there. Send me some suggestions, some feedback, and let me know how I'm doing. Uh, here to help you guys and guide you the best that I'm able. So until next time, you guys take care. All right, bye. Yeah.